Knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. Reading between the lines. This particular video is a reflection on one quote from the Emerald Tablets. The true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. If the light is in you, the light which is engraved in these tablets will respond. Now, when I came across this statement, it brought forth a deeper level of understanding of something that I knew during the journey. Perhaps I learned it. Perhaps it was awakened within me. But it was this understanding that all information in the outer world, no matter how it's presented, is still interpreted from within. As in, you could take some information and you could present it to somebody most likely, in all its nuanced variation, they have interpreted it in a very unique way. Now, there's certain kinds of information that is very general. However, there's certain kinds of information that we want to assimilate, integrate into our being, that is information that is based on what we call inner world understanding. Now, this information is very powerful because in the personal development world, in the entrepreneurial world, in the world of understanding yourself and evolving yourself, the goal is to build a relationship between the information that is in the outer world and the information that is in the inner world. And upon deeper reflection and integration of the information through experience, we understand and value both knowledge plus experience. Knowledge is accumulated through reading, studying, watching videos, listening to lectures. Experience is accumulated through applying towards taking the information and applying it towards a goal a definite chief aim, to bring it into completion, to create. Now, in the process, we acquire wisdom. Wisdom is said to know the difference. And wisdom is a infinite continuum. It goes on forever. In other words, every day, you can acquire more wisdom, or more accurately put, you could allow the light from within to reflect on the outer world as a sign or synchronicity or information that is presented between the lines of what you read or study or what you hear from another person to reflect the awakening within, which happens as a result of knowledge plus experience. If a person has too much knowledge, but not enough experience. They feel stuck in their head, overly critical, overthinking, and developing what we call the ego mind. The mind that assumes that it knows the information. What we're looking to do is further develop the conscious mind. The conscious mind is otherwise referred to as the guardian of the subconscious. And it's in the realm of the subconscious where we find the superconscious. And this particular quote here is revealing the power of what happens to a student who harmonizes the conscious, subconscious, and superconscious by valuing and integrating knowledge into experience to acquire wisdom. You could say that wisdom is the superconscious. Knowledge is conscious thought. Experience, well, that's in the subconscious. That's another way of looking at it. But the truth is that if you want to be able to create what we desire in a way that is in alignment with the way we want to see it brought forth, we have to value both knowledge plus experience. Because it is in that process where we acquire wisdom. And then when we study further knowledge, or even go back and read the same information, or study the same information again, 
we'll find that the light that has been awakened within us as a result of the integration of knowledge and experience, which is the wisdom, will reveal itself further in what we are learning. In other words, we will understand it even more so. Now, there's certain books that I read over and over again. One of them is As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And I've been reading it for many years over and over again. I listen to it in audiobook format when I run. And absolutely every single time that I listen to the audiobook, I learn something new. And I believe the fundamental reason why this is true is because I learned very early in my journey that I could go about acquiring lots of knowledge, but if I don't have a place where I can apply that knowledge, I won't really know if that knowledge is true. And more accurately put, I won't even know if it's true for me. Okay? Because some knowledge may be true for one person, but it might not be true for another person. Or part of that knowledge might be true for one person. And part of that knowledge might be true for another person. And the only way you really know if that knowledge is applicable and valid for you, especially when you're looking to develop your connection between the inner world and the laws of the inner world, which are the laws of creation, and the outer world and your relationship with it via the laws of nature, especially if you're looking to do this, we have to value integrating knowledge plus experience. Now, me personally, because I'm an entrepreneur and I prefer the world of learning by doing, by applying, I tend to have most of my learning during the times where I am performing the activities or doing the things that I know I have to do to create the results, whatever it may be at that particular time, be it marketing, selling, innovation, leadership, whatever it is, the realms of entrepreneurship, or whatever of your choice, those are the times where you have experience. Now, because most of my time is in those areas doing, when I go back and read As a Man Thinketh or any other kind of book, even if it's a business book, something happens where that information starts to look different. And that's because through the experience, I'm actually changing within. My consciousness is changing through the experience. Now, as my consciousness changes through the experience, what I look at changes. The information changes. People change. Circumstance changes. Environment changes. Now, it is through this process and valuing this process where we really understand this concept here. And I'll say it again. This important quote. The true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. See, if we don't have the experience, then we'll further confuse ourselves by acquiring more knowledge, getting stuck in our head and overthinking. Overthinking is a sign. Stagnation is a sign of consuming too much knowledge. The truth is we already know what we have to do. We always know what to do. And all we have to do is just do that thing because it is through that thing where we will acquire experience. And it is from that experience where we can then, if we choose to, acquire more knowledge through study, conceptual study, in which that information will make even more sense to us. That's because what we're doing is we're cross-referencing inner world and outer world. If the inner world remains the same and has not changed, the information will present itself in different ways, saying the same thing until we change within, and then the information appears different, or more accurately put, the light within will be reflected on what we look at or what we learn. So knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. Now let's talk about a few things before we get started. You might notice that I have changed the format of these videos as far as the background. Many of you have reached out to me and said that the white background was not really ideal for when you're viewing it on your mobile phone, it drains the device or it's too much brightness on the screen. And I understand that. So I've replaced it with a darker background. So let me know in the comments below if you like this new format. Now there's an interesting model. It's called the David Kolb's 
experiential learning theory. So we know knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. It's a combination of knowledge plus experience that is going to create the wisdom that is going to give you your unique perspectives and your experience within that will allow you to create success again and again in a way that's right for you. Now, this particular model can be very helpful. And this information is parallel to the format learning model, format learning model, something that I'm a huge fan of, where we have a quadrant. And in this quadrant is different kinds of learning styles. You got a why learning style, you got what learning style, you've got how to learning style, and what if or where else learning style. And we actually are a combination of all these learning styles, but some of us have a bias towards one or another. The goal is to harmonize all these learning styles, to bring it all together. Remember, the mind likes to take things apart. We take things apart so we can put it back together so we can understand. That's why the mind is created. It's created to create, and the way to create is to understand conceptually as well as internally or intuitively. When they work together, we call this heart and mind relationship. They are in the spirit of harmony, conscious, subconscious, and superconscious working together. When the conscious is in harmony with the superconscious, you have the ability to draw in the information from the superconscious. Now, this information makes even more sense to you when you have been applying the concept of knowledge plus experience. So let's talk about this learning theory and how we can work with this so that we can further gain more wisdom through knowledge plus experience. So essentially, we all start with concrete experience. So we do something, right? Let's say you're starting a business. You're an entrepreneur. You're starting a business. So you have an idea. Many entrepreneurs will go down a certain pathway where they take that idea and they begin to dwell upon it and overthink it and plan too many things and not take the very first step, which is to put it out in the marketplace and make an offer to another person, thus getting stuck in their head again too much knowledge. Now, what he's talking about here is experience. So what we want to do is get version one out as fast as possible, minimal, as fast as possible, so we can get the experience. What does that mean? It means you create your first prototype and you go out there and you make an offer and you see if people are interested in it. Concrete experience is gathered through that very process. Now, if people accept it, then you can figure out how to optimize it and make it better. If people don't accept it, then they are giving you, you can ask them if you'd like, optimization data, questions, and even cause and effect reflection will give you insights of how to optimize what it is you're offering and maybe even change it in a way that resonates with them. Now, from that phase of concrete experience, which is doing something, we move into reflective observation. Now, in my last videos, many of my videos, I talk about this. I call this cause and effect reflection. Cause within and effect in the outer world reflection. As in you had a way of thinking, and then you went out there and acquired some concrete experience, which is the effect. And then you saw the experiences happen, unfold in the outer world. After that, you reflect. He calls this reflective observation, which is reviewing and reflecting on the experience and asking some questions. What can I do to make this in my favor? Ask yourself within, you'll get the answer within. Or if you don't, then perhaps you go to some knowledge or you connect with someone who is an expert who can help you. And then after that, we go into the next phase, abstract conceptualization, which is concluding slash learning from the experience. So. When we reflect upon what we have done and the response we get, we gain some insights as to what kind of questions to ask. Now, here's the thing going back to the quote that I mentioned earlier from the Emerald Tablet. It says, the true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. If the light is in you, the light which is engraved in these tablets will respond. Well, the light or the light bulb moment happens through the reflective observation and it is facilitated through the concrete experience. Now, when you have those two dynamics in place, you go out, you seek counsel, you read the books, and you get a integration 
of what you read, what you learn, based on your experience. So you get further knowledge based on the experience. And now you have a higher degree of wisdom. And then you go into the next phase, which is called active experimentation. Active experimentation, which is planning and trying out what you have learned. So again, to repeat this process, you have an experience, you try something, perhaps it goes your way, perhaps it doesn't go your way. You reflect upon it. If it doesn't go your way or it doesn't present itself in how you thought it was going to present itself in the outer world, you reflect upon it. You learn from that experience through acquiring some knowledge and abstract conceptualization, which is integrating your experience, your existing knowledge, plus your inner voice internal understandings, plus perhaps some concepts and ideas from others. And then you go and do it again. So what you'll notice this time is that you will take a step forward. And the process repeats itself in the entrepreneurial journey, and it could go in any one of these directions. You can end up optimizing your product or service in a way that people actually receive it, as in they want to buy it. Or number two, it awakens within you ideas, hunches, and inspirations to change the product around or move into a totally different industry and do a totally different offer. That can happen as well. Now, all of this is happening from a place of flow. If it gets stuck in our head or we have an overly developed ego mind, we're going to try to force the same thinking into reality and we are not following this process. So there are six main characteristics that he talked about, very important. Now, by the way, you'll also see the parallel between the format learning model because the reflective observation is more of a why learner, wants to know why everything is the way that it is and how does it relate. The abstract conceptualization is more of a what learner, the theory, the concepts of how everything works together. And then the active experimentation is the how learner who wants to learn by doing. But we're working with all of these in harmony. We're integrating them all together. And then finally, the concrete experience is the what if learner or the where else learner, otherwise also known as the entrepreneurial learner, who tests, tries and creates experiences so that they can further go in and optimize and evolve within and thus evolve what they're offering. Remember, we're bringing into harmony here the inner world and the outer world. So here are the six main characteristics of experiential learning. Number one, learning is best conceived as a process, not in terms of outcomes. Now, I paraphrase these to make them more related to the kind of information that I share in this channel, which is has a mystical component to it, has a very, you could say, logical component to it, has an emotional aspect to it, and a spiritual aspect. I always aim to integrate the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. See them all as one. So learning is best conceived as a process, not in terms of outcomes. We call this the journey, the journey. And I always say this, value the journey and see it as valuable as the destination. See it as one. That way, you will value the concrete experience. You will value the stage of reflective observation. You will value the conceptualization, abstract conceptualization stage and the active experimentation stage. And you will find more joy and bliss on your journey to creating success, whatever it may be for you. Number two, Learning is a continuous process grounded in experience. So learning is not based on personal development or this kind of information that we talk about on this channel, based on consuming a lot of knowledge, a lot of theory. If you do that with this kind of information, you will get stuck in your head. You'll start to overthink. I've seen this many times. I've spoken to many individuals about this. What you want is you want to ground your knowledge with experience. You want to apply it. Now, this is also how we let go of the ego, otherwise known as purifying the mind and purifying our intent. Through the process of grounding our knowledge with experience, we acquire wisdom and wisdom 
part of the journey of acquiring this wisdom, which is ever evolving, ever realizing, is letting go of these disempowering aspects within our subconscious, which we call the ego aspects of ourself. And it purifies the mind and purifies and clarifies our intent. What are we looking to create? Who are we looking to create it with? How we are looking to create it and to do it in the spirit of harmony. Number three, learning is the resolution of inner conflicts, or I would say finding order in chaos. Okay, finding order in chaos. We have to be able to embrace chaos for this particular kind of learning. We can't run away from it because if we run away from it, then we might delude ourselves with acquiring more knowledge. And that's a sign of fear. It could be one of the six basic fears by Napoleon Hill. It could be a fear of criticism. Fear is fear, but those are some categories. If a person identifies with fear, what I've seen this many times, they will bias over to acquiring more knowledge to soothe them. But it will result in further creating internal convolution, conflict, and confusion because they're not harmonizing that with experience. Now, if you'd like to just accumulate a large amount of knowledge and be able to talk about something, then by all means. But if you want to create results in your life, experience success, then we want to combine knowledge plus experience. So, in order to get the experience, we've got to be okay with stepping into chaos. And you've heard me mention this before. There's three types of chaos. There's flow-based chaos, as in you put yourself in challenging situations and you acquire more skill through this learning process. You place yourself in controlled chaos, which is projects or circumstances that are challenging and don't necessarily keep you in flow, but you consciously place yourself in those circumstances, whether it be leaving the job and starting the business, moving to another country, something that you would say really steps you outside of your comfort zone. And causes you to go beyond your terror barrier. Now, as a result of doing that, you also learn really fast, rapid learning. And I recommend doing this a portion. I prefer mostly being involved with flow-based projects, flow-based activities, and then diversifying it with some controlled chaos. Now, chaos, just pure chaos, is usually things we don't plan. Outer world circumstances change, the environment changes, things happen in the outer world that we did not foresee. We do not consciously foresee. And even in those experiences, we have the opportunity to learn. Now, if you submerge yourself in the process of acquiring wisdom, which is also purifying the mind, which is valuing as a harmonious integration, knowledge plus experience, you will find that you'll be able to maintain flow for higher degrees, longer periods of time. You'll embrace it. You will also be able to perform better in controlled chaos, which will cause you to grow and learn and evolve. And really what's happening is you're resolving your inner conflicts. Remember, the goal here is to harmonize the laws of creation and the inner world with the outer world and the laws of nature. And all of that happens within. No one to change but self within. Now, as a result of doing this, if chaos situations show up in the outer world, will be better equipped to be able to deal with it. You'll be able to maintain your presence of mind. We don't want to be reactive. We want to be proactive. So this is a way of life. Okay, as mentioned, this is a journey. That's why learning is best conceived as a process, not in terms of outcomes. Now, we want the outcome. We want the destination. But really reflect upon it. Most of your time is on the journey. The outcome lasts for a moment. And when you value both, then you value the journey and the destination, and you value life. And as a result of valuing the journey and valuing life, you see this all as joyous. You enjoy experience. You enjoy reflecting and learning. You enjoy abstract conceptualization. Now, reflect upon this based on your circumstance, your particular goals, because I tend to speak more to entrepreneurs, but whatever it is for you, you can see the parallels as well as active experimentation. All of this, I know as a result of integrating this myself, I enjoy all of these aspects. These are all important to me.
So I enjoy acquiring knowledge and I enjoy having experiences and I enjoy awakening the wisdom within. So whatever it is that I look at the outer world from via the wisdom within or the consciousness within is revealed as signs, inspirations, synchronicities, and further revelations and further understandings based on what can contribute to my goals, desires, and aspirations. In other words, there's going to be a certain point where you've evolved in this journey where you don't necessarily listen to absolutely everything a person has to say and assume that they know everything. You'll be able to read between the lines and think more so for yourself. Eventually, you'll be able to discern with such vividness that you will respect and understand the opinions of others while honoring your own, what is right for you, listening to your intuition and your inner voice and creating success from that perspective. Number four, learning is a holistic process of adaptation to the world, inner world and outer world. If you've got conflict within, it's going to show up as you having conflict with the outer world, people, environment, circumstance, and information. Remember, through this process here, and this is how it's done, it's through this process, put it to use. Figure out how you can take what's being discussed here and apply it. Through this process, you harmonize the laws of creation, which is within, which you've been discussing over many videos, and the laws of nature. And again, remember, if you keep consuming the videos or you keep reading the books and you keep acquiring more knowledge, you may end up getting stuck in your head, overthinking, having mental rigidity. The key is to do and have more experience. Really integrate this entire David Kolb's learning theory, and you'll find that it'll be very helpful for you. And it'll bring you back into flow, and eventually autotelic, where your actions and awareness is one. See it all as one. Because remember, as I share in my videos over, I don't know, last 30, 40, 50 videos that I've done, most of this is subconscious. The conscious mind chooses, guards the subconscious mind. We don't allow it to get to a place where the conscious mind becomes identified with aspects where we create the ego mind. We want the conscious and the subconscious working in harmony. And through the learning theory, the conscious mind is doing what it needs to do to create your success, which is reflective observation, abstract conceptualization, active experimentation, and the concrete experience is really the conscious, subconscious in the experience, having the experience. And even in those moments, you will notice as you continue in this journey, the light from within will bring forth the superconscious in those experiences more so. Number five, learning is a relationship between the person and the environment. Okay, key word here, this is all relationship. All is one, and we take things apart to put it back together again, to see it all as one. It's okay to break things apart into concepts. And certainly knowledge is a whole bunch of different concepts. For example, in the business and personal development world, you'll find all kinds of different knowledge. And it can be very overwhelming on the volume of knowledge. Understand that all that knowledge is broken down, discussed from different perspectives, all communicating the same thing from different perspectives. When you get to a certain level of wisdom, you'll see it. You'll see it's all integrated. And the goal is to pick and choose what works for you and apply it to experiences so you can find a process, a formula, a set of principles that work for you that produces results again and again and again. And then number six, learning is a process of creating knowledge through experiences, otherwise known as expressing the light from within. So this brings us to a nice parallel between the quote. So I'll read the quote again. The true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. If the light is in you, the light which is engraved in these tablets will respond. So it is through the experiences where we create knowledge. We create our own knowledge. Now it parallels the knowledge that you will read in books. It will parallel the knowledge that you read or you learn from others who really understand how this stuff works. It'll parallel. It'll be accurate. Because the information at the core 
down to the order level within the chaos is absolute and precise. And we move into higher levels of evolution within through this process to see that precision. Now, when we see that precision, we can take a book or anything, especially deep spiritual concepts or information like the Emerald Tablets, and we'll be able to read between the lines to someone that does not have a certain level of wisdom. If they were to read something like As Men Thinketh or the Emerald Tablets, it may just look like a bunch of words. It may just look like an interesting story, a nice theory. But it is only through the journey, which is the experience done through a format like this, where it, there's an integration between knowledge and experience, where you start to awaken certain aspects within you. Call this a deeper connection with the superconscious via the subconscious through purifying the mind, which happens on this journey, to be able to really understand nuance distinction. Nuance distinction. Now, nuance distinction implies and keeps into consideration the law of polarity. The law of polarity states that there are two poles and there are varying degrees in between. It's a concrete experience that you're having. You feel reactive to that information. You reflect in observation and say, what is causing this reactivity within? What is the belief, the assumption, the programming within? Conceptual, or then we go into abstract conceptualization. Where can we learn what new beliefs, what new assumptions, what new information can we learn as a result of this experience? And we can integrate it into one of the subconscious mind modalities that I talk about or whatever modality works for you. And then what you'll notice is that you will no longer polarize to that same degree between the scale. Now, as you continue to go through this life journey, you're learning, you're growing, you're evolving. And then you understand that information that you once were reactive to in that scale of polarity. It now makes sense to you. So then when you go and read some information that may appear to be very esoteric and abstract, it's going to make more sense to you because it's speaking to that wisdom that you have acquired within. What we're really doing then is creating a nice integration and harmony between the four realms of existence, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Now, all of these are experiences that we have as a result of valuing knowledge plus experience. So again, understand the bias. If you have too much experience, but you're not making progress, you can balance it off. You can harmonize it with knowledge. If you have too much knowledge, you get stuck in your head, you overthink, you become overly reactive. You have to get yourself more into the realm of experience. And it is through this process where you acquire the wisdom. You'll be able to understand more nuanced variation, nuanced distinctions. That's what is essentially between the lines. If someone gives you some information, you're going to be able to see far more within that information than they even realize that they're communicating because most of them perhaps is subconscious and has not been brought into conscious awareness. But you'll be able to understand based on what they share with you what is really going on behind that information. It's going to be really valuable for you. Now this information will be very powerful for the entrepreneur because the entrepreneurial journey is riddled with nuanced distinctions and understanding those nuanced distinctions, which is experienced through the accumulation of experience and knowledge in harmony. So not biasing one or the other. So remember the four aspects of the format learning model, the why learner, the what learner, the how learner, and the what if or the where else learner. We want to integrate them together. We want to harmonize them. Just like we want to value all four aspects of this learning theory, the concrete experience, the reflective observation, the abstract conceptualization, and the active experimentation. If you want a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.